Starfield just got some big news over the past week from Todd Howard from Bethesda Game Studios, and it was about the game's future and the possibility of future expansions being added to the game in the coming years. In today's video, I'm also going to go over some recent information Todd Howard gave us about how big Shattered Space will be, the recent negative reviews for Starfield, and new sales numbers for the game. Before we get into it, if you enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the latest Starfield news. In a recent interview with Mr. Matty Plays on his YouTube channel, Todd Howard said that Bethesda Game Studios is currently looking to release future story expansions for Starfield on an annual basis going forward. When asked about the release of these future story expansions for Starfield on an annual basis, this is what Todd Howard had to say. Not to lock you guys in too hard. I know things change, but would you say you're aiming to do like an annual story expansion every year? I would say we want to more or less. Yeah. How long that continues, hopefully a very long time, but that's, we're planning for the one after this. So there, there will be another one. And I don't know that our goal is to answer every question. We sort of look at it and say, Hey, what's, what's a good angle? What do we want to add to the game mm -hmm. as far as an experience or a tone or those mm -hmm. kind of things, if that, if that makes sense. It sounds like Bethesda Game Studios is already currently in the early stages of planning Starfield's next DLC story expansion, and if they are able to pull off an annual release schedule for these expansions, then it's possible that it could release at some point in late 2025. That is, of course, if Bethesda Game Studios releases the Shattered Space DLC expansion by the end of this year in 2024. We don't have a release date for it just yet, but we do know that it's coming in some point in 2024, hopefully, at least that's all they've said so far. But some rumors have placed its release at some point in September, around the one year anniversary of the game's original release date. Let me know what you think down in the comments about the possible annual story expansions to Starfield. When talking about the size and scope of these upcoming DLCs, including the Shattered Space DLC, Todd Howard compared the target size of these to be that of the Far Harbor DLC from Fallout 4. That can be seen in the reported size of the Shattered Space DLC, which is said to be a more compact experience that is set to take place on only one planet with handcrafted environments. When talking about the size of the Shattered Space DLC, this is what Todd Howard had to say. One of the things that, that we always liked about it from the get-go, and I don't think people realize, is that Shattered Space, the bulk of that expansion pack, pretty much, you know, once you get to the city and the planet, um, it takes place there. That's going to be one of my it questions. It allows us to build a, a landscape like we would traditionally do and have the city and the quest. And so that story takes place there and the landscape's kind of, you know, content wise, we're looking at kind of like what we do with Far Harbor on mm. Fallout 4. We're like, okay. My language. In some sense, it does seem kind of strange to me that in a space exploration game like Starfield, they would see the entire story for one of their expansions limited to only one planet. But I would imagine that the goal of an annual expansion with handcrafted environments much like they're planning makes this the most realistic approach for the game's development. If they wanted to expand these new story DLCs to multiple different planets throughout the game, then they might need to utilize some more procedural generation like they did in the base game. So if that's what it takes to get fully handcrafted environments from Bethesda Game Studios, then I guess I can become okay with that fact. Todd Howard does give a bit of an explanation about their planning and development around the Shattered Space DLC and why they went in this direction. Here's what Todd Howard had to say. This is a scope that works for, you know, our development in doing this kind of annual story expansion type of thing. So um, really excited about that. And it lets us, you know, kind of do some things um, the way we would in, in previous games and give people not completely that experience because it's still Starfield. Sure. Um, but, you know, this new kind of alien world that you're able to explore and it's it takes place there. I have seen some negative takes out there about this approach to the future expansions in Starfield, but if it means that we can get more handcrafted environments and unique experiences, then I think I will be fine with that in the long run. One thing that is very nice to see at the moment is that Bethesda Game Studios plan to build out Starfield and continue to expand out its world with new content for players to experience. Let me know what you think down in the comments about the size and scope of these future Starfield expansions. In the interview with Todd Howard, he did say that he wished they would have supported these games longer and made more expansions for games like Starfield and Fallout 4, and continue to bring new content to those games over a longer period of time. One thought that does seem sort of problematic in the long run to me is how they plan to monetize these future expansions. 
For the people that bought the deluxe edition of Starfield, that includes the Shattered Space DLC in it, and I wonder if they will have to buy the future expansions. My guess would be yes, and I wonder what the price point would be for these new expansions. There's also a discussion to be had at the moment about paid mods and missions in Starfield, and what exactly is going on there at the moment in the game. There's a big discussion going on in the Starfield and Bethesda games community right now around paid mods, and the fans have definitely made their voices heard with Starfield's recent reviews dropping to mostly negative, and the all-time reviews for Starfield still had a mixed reaction. The recent reviews have seen a deep dive into the red, as shown by this chart from SteamDB. Some of these negative reviews are fans who are tired of waiting for a release date for Starfield's upcoming Shattered Space expansion. But what has made the biggest impact around the negative discourse surrounding Starfield is the introduction of the official modding tools and the Creation Club which features paid mods and has been introduced in games like Fallout 4 and Skyrim as well in the past. Creation Club has introduced in-game mods to Starfield. Some of the mods are free and I've been using them recently. They are great additions to the game and very easy to use. But the negativity comes around these paid mods. Some add items to the game, and some of the others are in-game missions that can be only accessed through the Creation Club. The paid mission in question here is the Vulture mission, and it's the second mission in the Tracker's Alliance of Quests, and it will set you back around $7 in the Creation Club. The first mission in the Tracker's Alliance is free for all players to experience in-game now, but if you want to try out this second mission, the Vulture, then it will cost you around $7 or 700 Creation Club credits. Also, just as a side note, if you bought the deluxe edition of Starfield, then you get 1,000 Creation Club credits for free, if you choose to use them, of course. But the bigger discussion around all of this is should paid mods be a thing? I can see both sides of this discussion honestly, but it's clear that players are not happy about these paid mods at the moment. On one hand, it does feel like the pricing structure does need to be looked at, and it feels like we're being nickeled and dimed at times for small amounts of content, and these missions from Bethesda Game Studios could have easily been free, and aimed at bringing players back to the game. But on the other hand, these paid mods could be a great tool for independent modders who have traditionally made mods for games and not expected any money from them at all. These modders are the biggest reason that Bethesda games stay relevant for as long as they do, and if they're able to make some money or even a living at this point off of providing mods for players, then it's possible that we could get even bigger and better fan-made content in the future. But I do get the overall negativity surrounding these paid mods. This could set a dangerous precedent for Bethesda game studios and their monetization strategies going forward. Let me know down in the comments what you think about paid mods being added into Starfield. During the interview with Mr. Matty Plays, Todd Howard did respond to the criticism surrounding paid mods and said that the studio will take a deeper look at their pricing model for Creation Club content. Here's what Todd Howard had to say about this in the interview. Yeah, you know, we hear that feedback too. And, you know, we, first of all, I say that stuff gets priced based on you know, things that we've done before, both in Creation Club and then Fallout 76, and we're always trying to be kind of looking at what else is out there, really make sure we're giving value to everybody and where we're not, hey, you know, we, we definitely will adjust. The one thing I want to say on the Trackers Alliance, that was really an attempt to something we did in Creation Club where we'd say, hey, you get this special outfit and you get this special weapon. We kind of wanted to put them together and then thought, well, let's Let's go the extra mile and wrap those around a quest. But now we definitely see the feedback, right? And it's like not what we want at all in terms of, oh no, this looks like a faction that we're chopping up and then selling for 700 credits at a time. And so I do think we're going to take a look at that and how we deliver content you know, like that and whether we're changing pricing or breaking it up or, or what we should do there. Um, so great feedback from the community. Hopefully Todd Howard means what he says here when talking about the feedback from the community about these paid mods. The overall community has made it very clear at this point that they're not happy about these so adjustments are definitely needed. He also talked about supporting modders in their community of games and that their view of these mods is to expand a healthy modding community. In the interview, here's what Todd Howard had to say about this. You know, particularly the creators out there, look, you know, our view is that a lot of them have gone from hobbyists to professionals and it's part of our job to make sure they can do that and that they do get paid and they see the monetary rewards from if they make awesome content. And so we had a great experience with Creation Club uh, with our creators and then the version we're doing now that first launched in Skyrim, um, they, everyone's just responded to really, really well. And you know, I think it's important for us that part of it gives us a really healthy 
modding community, right? Where you do have professionals. There is for sure two sides to this for charging for mods, but it has to be done right. And Bethesda charging this price for these missions is probably not the answer. Let me know in the comments what you think about Todd Howard's response to paid mods in Starfield. Now let's talk a bit about the player numbers and some new information that was revealed on that front during the interview with Todd Howard. He revealed that Starfield has now passed 14 million players across all platforms and is up from the 13 million players that was reported back in December of 2023. The more impressive stat here for Starfield is that a player's average time in game is over 40 hours at the moment, so that players who do get this game are almost playing for two days on average. Just to show how high that average playtime is, for reference you can platinum Spider-Man 2 on PS5 in about 28 to 30 hours, so people are for sure sticking with Starfield when they do pick it up. While Starfield does seem to be a success at the moment with over 14 million players picking it up, it does surprise me that the game has not seen more players to this point, especially with the reported 34 million Game Pass users that Xbox currently has. If I was Xbox, this might worry me just a little bit, but it's possible that this all could change with the arrival of the new Shattered Space DLC expansion in Starfield later this year. But if I was Xbox, I would have hoped that a game as big as Starfield from Bethesda Game Studios would have moved the needle a lot more in terms of Game Pass users. Maybe a game like Call of Duty Black Ops 6 will prove to be a bigger success on the Game Pass platform when it releases on October 25th of this year. Let me know down in the comments what you think about the recent new player numbers revealed for Starfield. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the latest Starfield news. And if you're looking for something else to watch, click one of the videos you're seeing on screen right now. I will see you there.